All right, thanks everybody for coming. Hope you're having a good DrupalCon. Uh, welcome to the Drupal Distributions and Recipes Initiative Update. Um, I put a link together for this slide deck at jimbir.ch slash Drupal recipes, or Drupal dash recipes. Um, there's a lot of links that I've included uh, to help you find your way around this uh, initiative. I am Jim Birch. I'm an engineering manager at Canopy Studios. Um, I'm the maintainer of a few modules uh, that are primarily config starters. Uh, bootstrap paragraphs probably being the most popular, and I have Vesio starter, which is another uh, another just config only module basically. Um, I'm former organizer of Drupal Chicago meetup and midcamp. Uh, did that before I moved to the beach in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Uh, and I am uh, an initiative coordinator uh, of the recipes initiative. Uh, we're gonna get into a lot of technical things which are beyond the scope of my knowledge. Um, there's a lot of uh, great developers that have worked on this project, Alex Pott, Bircher, uh, Ned, Ned Joe, Ned Joe. Um, that aren't here at this con. So we wanted to talk about the distribution in its current state and uh, you know what we need to move forward. Uh, so I work at Canopy Studios. Uh, we are hiring contract Drupal developers. So if you uh, know of anybody who's looking or you're looking yourself, uh, please feel to look us up. Uh, so this all started last year uh, at DrupalCon Portland in Dries' keynote. Uh, he talked about uh, starter templates. So he had the idea that we could have a starter in Drupal that uh, can empower ambitious site builders uh, to build things right away, like a blog or an event calendar. Um, you know, one click, you know, the person installs it, they have it, and it's done. Um, this piggybacked on the idea uh, that was already happening in configuration management world, uh, the extension of the CI initiative from Drupal 8. Um, and Alex Pott created a proof of concept that harnessed uh, YAML files uh, to extend you know, what we already have in config um, to create a recipe. Um, so he gave a great presentation last year about uh, the current state as it was. We're not that far away from where that was. Um, and we'll get further into the details here. So uh, there's a video up on YouTube that is uh, pretty great to watch. It goes into more technical detail than I can. Uh, so the problem, maintaining distributions and install profiles is hard. Uh, sites can only start with it. Uh, you can't ever uninstall it. Uh, and the distribution maintainers need to maintain all the dependencies. So if that's core, contrib, you know, you need to continually maintain this. It's probably why there's a lot of distribution maintainers that haven't contributed to the recipes initiatives because they are busy maintaining their distributions. Um, you know, so we come up with other features, uh, or other solutions uh, like features. Um, and again, they're hard to share like distributions. You know, once they're installed on your site, you can alter them, so it's hard to update them. Um, because they're so complex, uh, it would be nearly impossible to get it into core. Um, and then, you know, like features and custom modules, they're hard to share. Um, you need update hooks to alter. Um, and it's hard to touch core and other people's contrib configuration. So, uh, Alex created recipes. So uh, recipe starts with a YAML file, and first it goes through and installs any modules and themes that you need. Could be core, could be contrib. Uh, then it creates or updates configuration. Uh, once a, a few other core initiatives happen, uh, you'll be able to create content, and then it applies other recipes. Uh, so what recipes don't do is have their own code. So this is a, a strategic decision that, you know, 
uh, recipes are going to have configuration and they can install modules that contain code, but they don't have any code themselves. Um, they can make dynamic changes to configuration, or they don't make con dynamic configure, sorry, they don't make uh, dynamic changes to code related things, only configuration. Um, and they provide their own upgrade path. So like once you install the recipe, it is your configuration. Um, so you can do with it what you want. So the question we often get is, what if I need to do more uh, pre and post? So like somewhere during the installation step, you know, what if I need to do here? So you can install recipes that uh, can alter config if it's on the config world, or you can install modules that can uh, do update hooks and things like that. There's no update hooks in recipes, you know, to keep it as simple as possible. But as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, in its infancy. So everything is subject to change. You know, there is uh, code that you can go and in install your own recipes and start playing around with it. Um, but, you know, I'll mention later, you know, we are seeking co-maintainers, co-leads, uh, people with vested interests in making distribu distributions better and Drupal for ambitious site builders better. So if you have thoughts and time or money, you can help out with this initiative. All right, so let's get into what the recipe actually is. Um, recipe is in a folder, just like a module or a theme. Uh, there is a recipe.yaml, uh, which is next. And then you can have a configuration folder. And the recipe.yaml structure looks like this. This is a really simple example. Uh, so you have the name of the recipe and the type. Um, <coughs> the second recipes is for installing other recipes. So the event manager recipe would also get installed. Um, we're going to install node and date time range from core. Uh, and then <coughs> we are going to alter config using the config actions API. Uh, so this is uh, the biggest part of the recipes initiative is that we have an API that can change configuration in your site. Um, so in this instance, uh, the action is targeting the user role event manager uh, config and it's using the grant permissions action to give that role the edit and delete any event content. So the Convex Actions API, uh, this was uh, added into uh, the project already. Um, I just want to include, include a link to it so you can see the backstory if you so choose. Uh, config actions, uh, we have an open ticket that uh, is to determine which core config entity methods should be config actions. There are a few. Um, there, is a, or there are a couple issues we'll talk about later on that are working to identify uh, what other actions we need uh, by replicating the install profiles that are currently in Drupal core. So what are config actions? Or let's go, where are they first? It's uh, namespace, Drupal core, config action, plugin, config action, and they're local. Those are located in core's library under core config action plugin config action. It is, uh, it will be once this is all merged in. It will be in core. Okay. Yes. Thank you for the clarification. Um, so uh, finding config actions, uh, I learned this last night from a wonderful gentleman on Slack. Um, he wrote a, a little Drush PHP script that searches for all the config actions, and we'll go through them. Uh, so the most common is the simple config update. Um, so you can basically pull, say what config you want to uh, alter. Um, so that's the node setting, so the user settings, the system theme. Then you use the simple config update 
uh, action, and then it's foo bar. So you can say what you want to alter and then what the, the result is. Um, so in this case, we're allowing the admin theme to be used. Uh, we're changing the registration to admin only, and we're using the gin admin theme and the start there. Uh, there are two that I haven't found a good use case for yet, and I don't think anybody else has. Uh, so ensure exist is used to conditionally create a config entity, um, and then entity create uh, is used to create a config entity. And then entity method, uh, there are two. Um, so set filter configs, uh, that would be for uh, CK editor filters, and then the grant permissions, which I've seen used in a bunch of example recipes. Uh, we have an issue for proposed uh, config actions. Uh, so there are a couple. Um, Umami has a case where they alter the views uh, config, so basically, we need to go in and figure out what would need to be done there. Um, and there's a couple other ideas that will possibly be needed there. All right, so to recap, <coughs> recipes are applied to Drupal, uh, not installed. Uh, they're easy to share. They don't lock sites in. Um, they're composable from other recipes, and they leave no trace. Um, so let's see if I can share this. And let me accept privacy policy if I can get over there. All right, so uh, your friend and mine, uh, Kevin Quinlan, who was mentioned in the keynote yesterday for being awesome at AI, he was also awesome at taking all this recipe stuff and uh, converting it into a nice workflow where you can basically get up and uh, installed and up to date on recipes right away. And so he links to uh, Alex's video. Um, in this case, he's using Drupal scaffolding to uh, install the recipe from Composer. Um, so the first thing he does is uh, creates a, a repository, a remote repository for his recipe. Uh, then he uses uh, the Composer Installers extender um, to add a new installer type called Drupal Recipe and then gives it a path where the recipe needs to live. Step two, he adds the uh, repository to his composer.json and then there is a patch for Drupal core that allows recipes to be applied. Um, so that is pulled directly from git.gitcode.org. Um, so installs Drupal with a minimum profile, requires his recipe, which does a bunch of like pre-set up things, probably you know, saves himself four to six hours of all the clicking that you do when you normally start a Drupal project, uh, and then he applies the recipe. So there is a new script in, that came along in Drupal uh, that uh, you can hit at Drupal core scripts Drupal, uh, that there's a recipe script now, and then where to put the recipes, or where actually where to run the recipe from, so that's where it was installed, recipes, contrib, Drupal base. And once that's uh, secure, you can, he logs into the site and you can actually see that the gin theme was enabled. So let's see here, I'm gonna pop that up and give a full-fledged view of the config. So here's a great readme really looking at the recipe. So if we looked at the simple example before, uh, this instance is name, Drupal base, description, the type is site, and then 
He's going to install all these modules, core and contrib. Since he installed minimal, he has kind of complete control over what he's installing. Uh, using the config section, he is importing, and from the individual modules that he's installing, um, he's going to put star for modules where he wants all the config, um, and then individual redirect or individual configs for the ones he doesn't. So in the redirect example, he doesn't want all the views that comes with it, so he's just pulling in the three that he needs. And then down here in actions based on the configs above, he goes in and uses simple config update quite a bit to turn on and off what he wants, place blocks where he wants, in which order. Sets the admit admin theme. So this is a great example of a nice little site starter. So thank Kevin if you see him. Uh, he also made a recipe generator. Uh, so this is a, a Drush command that will help you uh, start your recipe YAML file um, using a nice interactive prompt on the command line. All right, so now the good stuff. While you're all here to learn about contributing to the initiative, um, we're in Drupal Slack, uh, so there's the distributions and recipes channel, and I'll post a link to these slides in there so you all sign up and come back and check it out. Um, there's a bi-weekly meeting uh, at 1600 UTC, um, and there's a user issue on Drupal.org, so uh, Tim from the Drupal Association, you know, goes through and sets up new meetings and new meetings issues, so people that attend and contribute get issue credit on Drupal.org, which is a task in itself, so thanks, Tim, if you're around. Um, let's get into some important documentation. So we have a strategic initiative page on Drupal.org. This, like other initiatives, is meant to be an outline of the initiative. Um, so again, we define the problem, who we're building for approach, kind of gives you the high level overview. Um, we're breaking the tasks that need to be done uh, out into a few different tracks. Um, so you know, right now, you know, we all feel like this isn't a very uh, organized, you know, way to like get people immediately to come in and contribute. Um, so we're, you know, we're actively working on it. Uh, that's what I'm going to be working on in the next couple of days. Um, but there are a few different things that are are happening here. So we're going to have to make changes to Drupal.org, right? Because there's no recipe. So we're going to need new projects, uh, new project type on Drupal.org. Um, we're making changes to Drupal Core. Um, right now, the code is in its own project, um, like a lot of initiatives to be. Uh, be able to more uh, innovate, move faster, you know, we basically cloned Drupal core and working on it in a project like a module would be um, until we get it to a point where we could create a patch or a merge request to get all that back into to Drupal core. Um, so there'll be more improvements on this page coming soon. We'll go... Uh, the patch that I mentioned earlier, the there's a patch of that distribution, yeah, yeah, of that change. So, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, there is a Drupal core idea uh, issue. Um, so I don't know if, if everybody knows, but there is a project on Drupal.org called Ideas. Um, it's where you know people think out of the box and what kind of changes we want to make to Drupal over the years. So there's this issue that you know. It goes back even more, like before any code for this was, you know, it made uh, on how to get this all in. Um, and there's a lot of issues tracked there that aren't necessarily in the code um, because it affects more things than just the code. Uh, uh, we have the project page, so 
is where everything is. There's nice little just steps to link to the patch, um, link to the documentation on how to get into everything here. Uh, there are technical documentation inside the repository. So when Alex uh, made the initial commits for this, you know, he docu documented everything out in readme files that went along with the project. So this is, uh, you know, the initial vision for everything. A lot of links to uh, tickets that have already mer merged in, um, so you can get the, the full story there. And there's also a distribution and recipes tag on Drupal.org. Uh, so, you know, uh, I don't know if any of you went to WIM's uh, configuration validation uh, talk. You know, there's a lot of tertiary issues that are out there that could be related to distributions. Like, you know, the validation doesn't need for it to exist for recipes to work, but, you know, it would make it a lot better and safer. All right, so I mentioned before, we're looking for co-maintainers, additional leads, anybody that wants to contribute, uh, cat or dog people alike. Um, again, in those docs, there's a uh, roadmap um, where we're trying to break out uh, the individual steps that need to be done. And then <clears throat> what we see as our uh, immediate goals, you know, because uh, our friends in Europe, Alex and, and Bircher and Neto, aren't here uh, today. I'm sorry, I'm probably ruining his name. Uh, you know, there's some things that we can do, you know, as you know, Bob Snodgrass and I are kind of site builders in this uh, initiative here. Um, we're trying to model Core's uh, install profiles to see if we can, with what's made, uh, recreate standard, minimal, and umami as recipes. Um, so that will tell us if we're on the right track that we can, you know, install from recipes or what config actions we need uh, to continue that process. So we have an issue for standard that has a, a little bit of work done on it already. Uh, I made one an hour ago for umami. Probably need to make one for uh, Oh, I made the issue. <laughs> <laughs> Took me about two minutes, really. Um, uh, it was the minimal. We need to have an issue for minimal, too. Um, so, yeah, again, I jumped the gun and talked about Wim's uh, talk, but I'm putting a link in here so we can all watch it on YouTube when it uh, comes out. All right, so anybody have any questions? All right, thanks. Good night. No. <laughs> So at this point, what's that? Thank you. So if two recipes are installed trying to change the same configuration, who wins? It would be the latter one. Um, if there is something that happened to the config where the foo didn't exist for the bar to get updated, then it would fail. So I think that would need to be done in, read the question, thank you, you're gonna say that a lot. Uh, so is there a way to install recipes or functionality conditionally? Um, so we're using, when we, we started modeling the standard profile, um, you know, initially we were like, oh, we're gonna have one recipe that installs standard. Um, but what if I wanted to install the article content type, but not tags. So we're starting to go in a really composable method where there's a recipe that installs the tags to taxonomy, and there's a recipe that installs the article tag, uh, content type. So in theory, you should be able to compose your own recipe with the options that you want. Thank you. Way back there.
So there's a lot of, uh, oh, there is a, this sounds like features override from Drupal 7 and a lot of other modules in the config space. Um, this is a solution for Drupal core. So I think it is in the family of config rewrite and, and of the config actions Drupal contrib module and you know, there's a lot of things in this space. I think this is trying to come up with a simple solution for, or come up with the simplest solution possible for Drupal core. So this is, once the recipe is, this, this is the question that gets asked all the time. Is there a way to update recipes once they're installed? No. So once a recipe is installed, it is yours and it is gone. Um, so you could reinstall an update, uh, a recipe. Um, you could install, you know, a custom module with your uh, distribution that did update hooks and things like that where you're still connected to the site that installed your recipe. Um, but the idea is that recipes are gone in the night. Is there a composer.json and or how do we uh, and, yeah, ensure that the dependencies are there. Uh, there is the idea of composer.json in the works. Uh, it hasn't been solidified yet. They're not sure if that's the right way to go yet. Yes, are, are there any plans to have conditional questions during the recipe install process? Uh, I don't believe so. Is there an order of the way? What, what was the order specified? <laughs> How is the order specified in the recipes? I believe it is set in code. I don't believe there's a way to alter it. Are there ways to track what recipes have been installed in your site? Uh, at, at this time, there is not in Drupal, um, but if you followed Kevin's blog post, you do have it in your composer.json. But there is there are issues discussing that, um, you know, there are people that are talking about uninstalling ability. Um, which if you uninstall, then you need to be able to track what's installed, right? Um, but again, that adds another big layer of complexity. Different recipes, or would you have one recipe and then certain 
I would have in that, uh, okay, so if we have, I'm gonna have Benji just come up and repeat the question. Uh, uh, so if you have uh, slight variations on a recipe, you know, how do you handle that? Yeah. So in a scenario where I have a, a starter, um, where I can host on two major uh, hosting platforms that would love to sponsor this initiative, uh, <laughs> I would have multiple recipes. So I would have my base starter, but then I would have a host-specific recipe that would pull in the starter. Um, and I would even make it more composable to that because, you know, you don't need an event calendar on every uh, website. So me, even my starter might be like a, a base site structure starter and then, you know, which content types I want or blueprint schema entities or, you know, and so on. But, yeah, I know there's host-specific modules and configuration at every site. So yes, there is, oh, it is one of the steps uh, to install content. Uh, yes, so there are, there's an effort in Drupal Core that uh, content entities are part of Drupal, I guess. So if that can be figured out, if we can install content using configuration, then you would be able to install those content entities using a recipe. Okay. Uh, if you have to figure that out, you know, which is the number of printers that have the most of the stuff Sounds like a fun task for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a way to delete a field from a content type? I believe there is, so you could use the config alter to alter the form and the display. It's a good question. I don't know if you can actually delete the field. It's a good question. We'll have to look into that. Yeah, which at this time I don't know if there's a config delete action. Maybe somebody could make an issue about that. Uh, I believe uh, so. So if a module installs an entity, okay, and then what's the next step? Mm -hmm. So if a module creates an entity and another entity tries to create the same entity, will this recipe solve it? I don't think so. I think the recipe install would fail also. Yes. Uh, can recipes extend other recipes? Yes. Is there an MVP goal to get Drupal recipes into core? I have no idea how that works. So. <laughs> oh, I know what it means. <laughs> I have no idea what it takes to get something into core. So good question for tomorrow. Is the plan to replace installation profiles? Uh, I think at this point that would be a, 
a good lofty goal, but at this point there's been no discussion of the actual implementation. I think it would be easier to maintain more moving forward and really get into you know, the ambitious site builder realm is if we, you know, got rid of install profiles altogether. You just had a Drupal install. Like, you know, a lot of people have talked about like light Drupal core, there's probably other words for it, but you know, you just have your minimum, minimal profile install and then you apply whatever recipes you need. You know, that would be cool in my eyes. So Inception was a really boring movie. And how does recipes, installing recipes, and installing recipes work? So that's what we're trying to work through by replicating the install profiles. Um, what that looks like, you know, how it looks like. You know, like I, I really like the way Kevin's looked where, you know, I can look at that YAML still. It's, it's large, um, but it's still readable. Um, you can tell what it's doing and installing. Um, you know, it's YAML. You could have comments in there too, you know, talking through it. Um, I think because of, you know, Drupal core, we need to be very specific about the micro recipes that we're going to create and then putting them all together. Um, but yeah, only time will tell how recipeception comes out. So uh, recipes do not, the uh, question is, the recipe example that Kevin had uh, did not specify version of the module that it was installing, uh, just install a module. Um, so the versions would be specified by the composer file uh, for the site that he pulled it in. Um, if composer.json is going to be in, pulled into uh, recipes and this is a really good reason for it. Um, you know, you could specify the version that you're pulling in there, um, but you know, this is almost like your core dot extension YAML of this is what installed module is being enabled basically. Gordon recipe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hell <of a> kitchen. <laughs> The question was, there is, because there's no trace and no uh, lock file or versioning that's saved, uh, how do you move between versions, or move between servers, environments? Um, so this is config. So this is the same as you site building. And then, you know, once you're ready to move between environments or hosts, you're exporting your own config and saving it. So it's, you know, replacing the manual steps.
Thank you.